Welcome to this session on power, thrust and optimum rotors. We will look at 1D momentum theory for wind turbines. And my name is Henrik Fadermose. A wind turbine is a device which is made to extract energy out from the wind. It does so by taking out the kinetic energy and therefore the wind loses velocity as it passes through the turbine. After this lecture, you will be able to explain how the flow is break by the turbine and explain also the theory behind the optimum rope power production of an idealized rotor. Rotors uh, come in many shapes. This is an old one uh, from the 80s. This one here is a modern one. This one here is a specialized one for experiments with floating wind turbines. The role of these rotors is to stop the wind, not fully, but enough to kind of take out some kinetic energy, which can then go into the power. We will look at the 1D momentum theory to analyze how much power can you actually extract from the wind. Because if we think of it, then of course we could try to block all of the wind. But that would also mean that no more wind would come through to us and we would have zero energy. The other sign is to extract no uh, energy at all. Uh, then we wouldn't break the wind, but no energy. So there is some optimum in between. That's the optimum we want to find. Let's look at the flow here through the rotor. I already said that we stop some of the velocity. That means that the flow occupies a bigger area as it passes through because no wind is stocked or stored here on the way. So velocity starts with a V0 velocity and then it kind of goes down to a terminal velocity. We know from Bernoulli's principle that falling velocity leads to bigger pressures. So the pressure has to increase until it gets to the point of the rotor. Over the rotor, there's a drop in pressure here, and then say the pressure recovers to atmospheric pressure again. And that also means that the velocity keeps falling until we are at the back at the atmospheric pressure. This is something we can analyze with the Bernoulli equation. The Bernoulli equation says that you can follow a streamline and along that streamline, the sum of pressure and one half rho velocity squared is constant. So if we go from the start and then to the start of the rotor, we will have that this initial term here equals P plus one half rho u squared at the front of the rotor. Now from the back of the rotor and to the end, we can apply the Bernoulli principle again. We would have the same pressure but now with the pressure drop included, the same velocity term that's here, and then in the far end, we would say P0 plus one half rho u1 squared. Now, by subtracting these two equations, we can actually derive an expression for delta P, and that's the one written here, which kind of expresses delta P in terms of the inflow velocity and the termi terminal velocity. Our next step will be to look at the momentum conservation. And we have drawn up a control volume here, which is the red box. And we will look at the balance between inflow of momentum, rho A0, V0 squared, outflow of momentum, rho A1, U1 squared, and forces. The forces are delta P times the area. Now this delta P, we have an expression for that from the previous slide. And we are also able to utilize mass conservation. Because rho A0 V0 equals rho A1 U1, which also equals U times A times rho. And we can divide that out as a common factor. And that leads to this important result, which says that the velocity through the rotor plane is actually the average of the inflow speed and the terminal speed U1. We could define this velocity in terms of an induction factor, the actual induction factor A. So we say that that velocity in the rotor plane is 1 minus A times V0. In turn, we could define uh, the thrust. So the thrust would be 1 half rho V0 squared CT, where CT is this function of A. And finally, for the power, we know that, say, power is velocity times force. So that would be thrust times u. All of that can be expressed in terms of a. We get 1 half rho a 
v0 cubed cp, where cp is this function here of a. So now if we are after getting the most power out of the wind, wouldn't we like to find the optimum value of a? We can do that by differentiation. So dcp dA is written here. It has a zero value for a equal to one third and one. One means no energy at all, it's a minimum, so not relevant. Our interesting optimum is the one third, which is the one that gives us the maximum power. And that value, cp, is 16 divided by 27. This is called uh, the best limit. So it tells us that, say, the best performance we can have from an ideal wind turbine is to extract 59% of the available energy in the wind. So, in summary, in this session we have learned that a rotor is a device that breaks uh, the wind and thereby extracts kinetic energy. We have seen how say, basic fluid mechanics laws can be used to describe the flow, Bernoulli's equation, mass conservation, momentum conservation, and we have found that an optimal, optimal rotor can extract 59% of the incoming kinetic energy.